Joshua and Vulcan recruiters. I'm here with Ali Rama, men's basketball guard. How are you doing today, Ali? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, doing good today. Uh, just kind of getting started, talk a little bit about what your life is like growing up. I know you grew up on the reservation. I know you have a pretty big family. What was that kind of like? Uh, yeah, so I grew up, um, I was, my dad is a head basketball coach, so I grew up around basketball my whole life. Um, I have 11 siblings, so I grew up with a big household, now, there always being a lot of us, um, and growing up, um, my, my dad being the basketball coach at Red Cloud, you know, being exposed to the game all the time, being around it, it's just become something that I you know, fell in love with uh, pretty easily. Um, yeah. yeah, sure. And then, uh, you know, what other sports were you kind of involved in early on in life? Uh, yeah, I did everything. Um, my dad was a single parent, so growing up, he kind of just brought us around. Um, yeah, we'd always be at the school doing stuff, and I kind of found out what to do around there, whether it was like getting in the cage, getting into football. And so, going, growing up, uh, I played football in high school and middle school. I did a little bit of soccer, uh, track, but a lot of it was mainly focused on basketball. Sure. So, was it pretty early on in life then that you kind of knew basketball was the, your number one sport, yeah, so to speak? I, yeah, no doubt. I, I knew pretty, pretty young that I really liked basketball. I was a for sure um, lean towards it my whole life. So, kind of from the young age, I had to take it from my time to do it. Sure. Uh, you went to Pine Ridge. Um, what was it like there? You know, what, what were your teams like? Uh, did you play basketball and then football and yeah. another sport there? Yeah, well? so playing football in high school, we actually, um, Red Cloud is a pretty small school. Um, and for football, or Red Cloud was, was mainly a basketball type of school. Um, and so our football team didn't have as much people that were interested in going out. So like my junior and senior year, we had uh, 15 to 20 kids to go out for 11 night football. So doing that was, small. yeah, it was an experience. I had to play all ends of you know, the field. I was the kicker, I was the puncher. <laughs> yeah, I literally did everything. I was QB, safety. And so I had to lead and um, learn how to win in those types of situations. And then for basketball, like on the reservation, basketball is really, really it's, it's the most popular sport. Um, and so, and it's played a lot differently than it is here. We play a lot faster pace. And so it was a transition coming into college, but back home, uh, playing with those types of people that really have a strong passion for the sport um, and a certain type of style that's specific kind of to the area that everyone plays similarly, sped up, um, that kind of like run and gun. It's, it's something that uniquely kind of shaped my uh, before we get into you know your recruitment and college stuff, talk a little bit about you know your roots. You're Ogallala Lakota, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm from the Pioneer Reservation of Ogallala Lakota. Uh, my Lakota name is Wakiyan Aru, which means Blue Thunder. Um, and I'm really uh, I know a lot about a culture. My dad speaks the language. My little sister speaks the language. So I'm really involved with the culture, um, and I want to be more. But I call it time to give me. A different world, but yeah, back home it's it's different than it is up here. It's for kind of a culture shock to come in here. Um, it's yeah, there's so much things that are different about it. Um, it's although it's the reservation is so huge, like everybody knows each other. It's a close knit type of family. So even though my biggest school it felt really big to me. Um, and yeah, I just love the, the feeling of home. Um, some people don't see it as that great of a place with you know, the poverty and the struggles that are there, but to me, it's the most comfortable place in the world. And what, are, what are those, you know, some people are really close with their roots. Obviously, you're one of those people. What does that kind of mean to you? You know, what, what does having that experience and being from the reservation mean? Yeah, with, um, with how much it means, like with how much, basket, with how much basketball means on the reservation, um, it's easy for me to connect to those that are back home and get just like be playing basketball. And a, a big part of that is like reaching out with the youth. Um, growing up, my dad always did basketball camps. So I was at every single one of his basketball camps. I knew all the drills that he would do. And like before he'd explain them, I already know what's going on. I've been to so many basketball camps. And so growing up in that kind of situation, um, it was really easy for me to lead basketball camps as I got into high school and kind of 
take on that role of being a role model for younger kids. Um, and so that's, it kind of came, naturally came to me and then once I started to see like how the type of effect it had on younger kids and how they were inspired by me playing this game, um, they just made me want to try to be better at it. And so it became more of a focus like around my senior year and on, onward to do basketball camps, help kids, um, and try to be a part of the model. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess jumping forward a little bit, I know this summer you had some kind of unique experiences on the basketball court. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the guys you were able to play with and what you did over the summer. Yeah, so over the summer um, I played in a pro-am league, a uh, professional amateur league um, in Portland, Portland, Oregon. And it was an amazing experience for me. Um, I was exposed to some really like phenomenal basketball players. Uh, I met Kevin Durant this summer. I played with Mike James, who was one of the top players in the European League overseas. Um, and then I played against multiple uh, overseas players, but I, I played at all types of different levels from Mexico, Italy, um, yeah, all over Europe. So that experience kind of, it was really cool to see that I'm able to play with those type of players and was kind of uh, really like assuring to me like that I belong in the basketball world, wherever it is. You know, I, I know that I can play now yeah. with you know, the best of them. Sure. Were there some things that you were able to, you know, do to grow your game this summer? And how, I mean, I guess, how were you able to develop your yeah. game? So this summer I played with Mike James, who, he used to play for Brooklyn Nets and Kevin Durant. Uh, and then now he plays overseas at EuroLeague for Monaco. And um, he's like a really dominant player. He, it's the type of things that you could do on the court was like pretty mind-blowing to me. Um, but him being so ball-heavy, I had to learn how to play kind of off-ball a little more. I had to learn to play a different role. Uh, this summer I was really focused on defense, and so I was all about hustle, getting up and guarding the best players, full court, um, trying to work on that part of my game, my spot up, like to shoot three. Just trying to support those guys that were obviously veterans compared to me, um, and kind of earn my, earn my stripes. And then I guess we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but going back to, you know, when did you kind of realize that college basketball specifically was going to be an option for you and what was your kind of recruiting process like? Um, I would say, or I didn't really think of it like as an option, more of like kind of, I knew that I wanted to do it as like a dream. And so I pursued it, you know, regularly. I worked hard, um, did the things I had to do, put, put the time in. And kind of, I think around like my junior year, uh, I started to get like some good coaches at me and talking to me. Going into and like playing AAU throughout the summer, like I knew that if I just kept trusting it, kept working hard, that those kind of offers would come. Um, and so, yeah, my junior to senior year summer is when a lot of my offers started to come playing AAU for bigger hoops. Um, and then, yeah, it was a lot of D2 schools, JUCO, and that was the majority of it. Yeah, and obviously you wound up choosing South Dakota Mines. What was it about South Dakota Mines that drew you here? Um, it's close to home. That was a big part of it, is that it was very close to home, so that my family could kind of see me play. Those that were around me at the youth that I wanted to inspire uh, back home when I was in high school, they were, I was able to still kind of have an impact on them, me being close enough. Um, that was one part of it, and then just the schooling. That's something that everybody, everyone comes here for to get a great education, um, to prepare, to prepare themselves for the next part of life. And so if there's going to be a life after basketball, I, I try to teach that to the kids that look up to me or anyone that you have to be aware of it, like, you know, there's going to be a life after this. And, uh, yeah. um, sort of leading off that a little bit, um, are you, what are, I, I know you got a couple years left to play yet, but do you know, kind of know which way you're leaning? Do you want to play professionally in Europe, yeah. or are you looking to get right back to Uh Yeah, so I'm part Mexican. Um, I have some heritage, or a family that lives in Mexico, and I've had a few teams kind of reach out to me or like, see if I was interested in coming back to Mexico, so I know that that's a possibility. Um, I, I can't really talk to them uh, in an official way, like to set up. Uh, official meetings, but I'm able to still communicate and they showed interest in me. So I know that playing professionally in Mexico is a possibility. And playing this summer as well, like seeing that I could play against that, that competition, you just find um, that's definitely something I'm interested in. 
Um, and then kind of going back into the academic side, um, what, what, how much do you value, you know, the kind of education that you're getting at South Dakota Mines, and what do you, I guess, what do you hope to do with that kind of once you graduate? Yeah, um, really, I try to, or what I want to do is I want to go back to the education and try to make an impact in any way as I could. Um, I was in industrial engineering, and now in business management. Uh, so really, my focus is going to be on just trying to improve the economy on the reservation. Um, and trying to help provide more jobs to people, more opportunities. Um, now let's switch over a little bit more to the basketball side. How hard was it? Obviously you didn't get a chance to play the first semester. How hard was that to just be on the bench and watching your guys and knowing you can help but not being able to really do anything? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, it, was, it was pretty difficult for me, but then again, like I understood um, that's just kind of how my time, that's how my time had to be in those moments. Um, you know, I, I tried to stay positive. Uh, and I figured that it would be a good experience for those guys to learn, you know, uh, some more about their own games and about themselves. So I tried to be, even though it was really hard and difficult, uh, yeah, I just had to be as positive as I could about it. I tried to keep preparing myself for what I was Sure, and then did you kind of develop some leadership, you know, from the bench while you were kind of maybe grow in that role? Yeah, I think I, I definitely did. And I also kind of um, changed my attention to like the, the younger the younger guys on the squad, freshmen, um, help them, you know, learn about their game, how college is kind of played, because I was playing a lot of basketball with them since we played against the starting five. And so I got to get ready for them and try to, try to help teach them and bring them along. Sure. And how were you able to stay game ready, too? I know you came back and you pretty much haven't missed a beat since you came back. So how were you able to mentally and physically stay game ready? Yeah, well this has been, this is just my fourth year now. Um, so I've had enough seasons under my belt that I kind of know where my game should be at. Um, and I know my routines, I know the type of shots that I give them every day, that if I prepare this way that I'll be ready. And so throughout that time, it, w it wasn't really that hard honestly because I think I talked about earlier, it being so hard, like the feeling of being on the bench was really all that I needed to feel me to get in the gym and check it out for the end of the because I couldn't really see anything. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, the way the season's gone so far, you guys are obviously still in the mix for an RMAC playoff spot, um, but you've had some pretty tough losses too. I think you've had four or five, you know, one, one score losses. What do you kind of take from those games to be able to you know, improve the rest of the season be able to lock up a playoff spot? Um, from those games, it's, there's so many games that we have, like, even throughout the whole conference, it's any, any night is one game. So, um, the amount of mistakes, like, that the side of win isn't a large number. It comes down to a few amount of mistakes, and really, our biggest takeaway from it is that we just have to be a lot more locked in, um, Kind of minimizing the amount of those tiny mistakes that or breakdowns that we have throughout the field, and that's really the, big, the biggest difference. Is it's not about like the last the last shot or certain turnover. It's kind of how you're able to stick to your uh, like what you do throughout the game and be consistent. And I think we're we're almost there. We're right there. We just gotta consistently clean it up and not have these stretches where you know we don't. What would it mean to you personally and to the program? I know it's been a couple of years since you guys have gotten into the RMAC playoffs. What would it mean to get back there again? Yeah, so um, my the, my sophomore year, when we, the COVID year, we actually did make it to the playoffs that year, but we didn't get to play um, because of COVID uh, issues with our team. So we were unable to play after making it to the playoffs. Um, so after that experience, like making it back was So I believe you have two years left of eligibility, right? What are kind of some of your goals for you as a player, goals for you guys as a team before you graduate? Um, I definitely want to make the RMAC um, playoffs again uh, on the list for sure. And then really besides that, it's just about growing and trying to, trying to far reach the level that we know we can. We have a great group of guys that, are, that I've been here with for a while, but I've been Jackson, all, all of those guys in there, we've been together for quite a while. And uh, 
I know that are suing the tie. And so really the thing that I care the most, most about is like reaching that same um, not not kind of saying that like, we wish we could have done this or like that. I think we could reach our potential and all right, I don't really have anything else for you today, Ali. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck the rest of the season. Hopefully I'll see you playing a lot more out on the court.